Hey, Brandon, excited for our fourth session. I am, I am, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, last session was really exciting with learning all of the AI features. So I'm excited to see uh, how I can really get this uh, uh, to be my personal AI today. Yeah, so I think uh, it's a fair question. I think we'll jump into templates. So if you share your screen, I can show you uh, some of our, show you our training tips lounge with some good templates that we can use to get started on some of your individual use cases. All right, so I'm here. Um, I'm on my personal AI right now. Perfect. So if you go to lounges. Lounges. And go to, um, it's good, training tips. Training tips. I haven't been to that one yet. OK, what's in the training tips lounge? Yeah, there's just some cool, I think this would be a cool template we can get started on. So if you okay. go to, I know, you know, I know your use case is to make an AI version of you, um, your friends, your family, the facts about yourself. So it's a great way to get, get started and get that framework. So if you um, expand these different areas, you can see some questions and we can answer some of them. As you okay. can see, they're, they're already in this format where they're contextualized, just like it will be a good way for you to understand how to put the data in. And it's most of the work's already done. So you can just pick one that resonates with you and we can, I'll show you how it works in terms of getting the data in and then also stacking it. Okay, well, uh, how about uh, just can copy this right here and where have I worked over the years and I have worked in the, uh, so I'll come back over here to, you said my AI, right? And yeah, you can, you can actually, it'll be this, if you stack it with your DM with me, it'll also, you know, work just as well. If you go to RDM, actually, then I can message you back. So go to RDM, okay. but it would be the same. Either way, you know, it'll, it'll stack. Okay. Oh, there's our red fish from our last, our last uh, encounter. That's our red fish. Okay. So, all right. Where have I worked over the years? I have worked, uh, I have worked, do I want to put a city here or does it matter or? Yeah, I'll just, you know, maybe say, dive into, I've worked in maybe the industry, um, the location. I have worked uh, as an accountant uh, in the telecommunications industry. Okay. So where have I worked for you? I've worked as an account in the telecommunications industry. So that's my job. I hit enter. And my AI is off. So nothing comes through. And I need to stack it, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I'm stacking it. And also now, your, AI, your your AI won't respond to what you say in DMs with me, but my AI would. Does that make sense? Because oh, you're not right? yeah. Oh, so in DMs. Your questions won't prompt anything from your AI. You can do ask my AI in the send drop down if you're trying to do that. Um, but if uh, I said now, if you turn your AI on, um, if I ask the question now, oh, it says I've worked as an accountant in the telecommunications industry. So yes, so the the question answer formats really is, can be very very helpful. I've seen people have spreadsheets where they put in a bunch of questions and answers and they just copy and paste it all in to their AI. Um, or you can use templates like the one we just saw and just paste it all in and fill in all the blanks. It's a great format because your AI sees a contextualized question. It sees the answer and it knows exactly what you're talking about and it'll answer it very well. It's a great way to structure your data because it's hyper contextualization. The more context, the better. Okay, so we can go back over to that training tips lounge. And we can look at, uh, let's see, um, maybe sports and hobbies, or I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn. Um, how about this? Uh, about, uh, where have I lived over the years? Here we go. Yeah. So we'll just do the second one. So chat, and do I need to chat with you, or do you want to still chat with you, I guess? And Yeah. Another, another cool trick is, do you see um, your AI, if you click on your, your B, if you click on your, um, on your message bar on your AI. Right. If you click right there, um, oh, or you know, in, our, in our message bar is fine. 
It's actually, yeah, if you go to our message bar. Okay. Yeah. So you're still on my DM with me. If you click on B on the on your draw on, on your message bar, right. do you see how Brad's AI is on? Right. If you choose a different AI profile, let's say you're messaging your wife or a friend, and then let's say you're messaging a colleague. If you pick a different AI profile, like we discussed earlier in the earlier sessions, it will all sync to that specific profile and it will not sync to the other one. Oh, so if I don't want people to know where I live, if they're talking with Brad's AI, I need to send it to my personal AI. Yeah. So they won't know my personal information. Exactly. And Brad's is still unified. Brad's AI, I would think about pro professional and personal or sub AI. So Profession, the, the data in personal is not in professional. Data in professional is not in personal, but they're both in Brad's AI. So for people that you're going to talk to, um, let's say you're talking to a colleague or you're, or you're uh, a colleague, you can use your professional AI profile and all the data they you send to them will go to your professional AI. So not only, uh, so it'll route the data to the right place. Um, so I just wanted to let, let you know, because I think that it'll help you in stacking. And if you're, if now you're in my AI, if you're trying to only stack to personal and professional, you can also go up on your screen and click on those profiles. If you're not talking to me, let's say you're training your AI by yourself, you don't, you're not talking to a friend or colleague, you can also just send data in there or professional if you're training by yourself. But I would suggest having a training buddy to make it more fun. So if you're in a DM and you have your personal profile picked, it'll do the same. It'll go to that data, um, data set. If you are in a DM, and you have personal cho chosen, it'll go to that data set. But if you're under my AI messaging your personal AI, it'll also go to that data set. So that's a bit about how that works. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, I don't want, I don't want people, I'll, I don't want everybody knows where I've lived over the years. So I will, I kind of want that to be uh, personal. So I'm going to change this to personal and, Perfect. and then I'm going to paste it. Where have I lived over the years? I have lived. Uh, I've lived in Fort Worth, Texas. All right, so I have lived in Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm going to send it out. And uh, nothing happens because I'm just talking to you. So, uh, but you can see what I'm saying there, right? Yeah, I can see that. I can see your the data you stacked, and then from here I can ask a question in that context. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it will pull, we'll pull from that data. Now, now when I go uh, to now, this goes to a different place, though, right? The personal. AI goes to a different location than the regular AI, right? The the main AI is a different memory stack, or you said unified memory stack, right? So yeah, when I go to personal, uh, it's 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 different. Thing. Okay. Yeah, so it'll, it'll all be under my data and your memory stack. There's no filter necessarily at the oh. moment, but you'll see it all there. Um, but it will go into that AI. And then if you're texting someone or messaging someone that you only want to give a certain profile to, they'll only get data from that AI. But if you share Brad's AI, they'll get everything. Um, okay. So that's a bit how that works. So it's good, um, it's, good to share, it's good to share my professional with folks, my acquaintances probably, and my, and my personal, I would like my friends and family and stuff. So. Per, per, yeah, exactly. So I would optimize your AI profiles based on your external use cases. If you're messaging only your friends, you may not need to separate, you may not need the AI profiles. If okay. you don't mind, if your coworkers know where you're from, then you might not, you, it might be okay because they'll only get that data if they ask. Um, so it really depends on who you're sharing it with and um, your own per preferences for your privacy. Okay, all right. Um, another thing we can try too, is if you go to your message bar, um, another way to generate questions, if you're training by yourself, is you can actually use the GPT-3, which I showed you earlier, to generate questions. So let's say you want to train your AI more on um, a topic, like 
uh, maybe questions about how you met your wife, or like you can even say to your, to your AI, if you type in a prompt, give me five questions about um, to ask about my wife or something that's interesting to you. Give me five questions to ask about my wife and then send it to GPT-3, right? Exactly, yeah. Ask GPT-3. All right, what's your wife's name? What's your wife's birthday? What are her favorite colors? What does your wife like to do for fun? And what is your wife's hobbies and interests? Now, I need to type those down here. I need to retype those questions and, and do answers, right? Yeah, you can also, if you just click on that, you can probably highlight it or you can use the. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I can just highlight, copy. Yeah. Well, you can, so what, you can do it all at once, probably, and then just fill in the blanks. Um, oh, really? Okay, all right. Copy. All right, what is my wife's name? Angela Smith. Don't even put a period behind, I guess it matters. What is my wife's birthday? My wife's birthday is January 15th, 19... 83. What is my wife's favorite color? My wife's favorite color is purple. What does my wife like to do for fun? She likes to go hiking. What is my wife's favorite hobbies or interests? Uh, my wife, I don't know, I think she likes shopping. I think that's everybody's, right? I mean, let's just go ahead. So now just do I that's it right yeah and then you can send that and stack it and it'll it'll work just like what we did earlier so right, it's a great way it. to get some templates for your okay. tat, you know, start training your ai in these different parts of your life and this can you can ask more specific questions and this format can be really really helpful okay so now th there's a little error there i'm looking it says purple and green yeah so I can go in here and edit that and stack it, right? You said if there's a, I can make a little change there. Yeah, exactly. I think also since you sent a statement, the AI is kind of just consulting it and it's trying to continue the conversation. Um, okay. so I would, if you ask the question, it might actually give you a different response because the reply when, that's why sometimes I actually mute the AI when I'm putting data okay. in because a lot of times the replies can be distracting or not necessarily correct. It's more just trying to, I don't know, like respond, be more conversational. So if you now ask the question by itself. Yeah, what is my wife's favorite color? Oh, look, it says my wife's favorite color is purple. That's awesome. Yeah, so it'll take all those questions and it'll use that and then you can reinforce that again. Like magic. Uh, let's see. What my wife like to do for fun? According to evidence, my wife likes to hide. Yeah, an another tip is also, I think sometimes um, it helps to stack in the tone that you'll use to ask questions. Meaning, uh -huh. um, if you're going to, like, I think sometimes when I'm stacking, I usually say, my instead of your, because then if someone asks a question, it'll respond more with my voice. So if you stack instead, you know, my wife's favorite color is purple, instead of your wife, it actually might even give you a better response just because it'll, okay, it'll so have less trouble like consulting that data. I need to unstack it, unstack it, then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say, my wife's favorite color is purple and then save it. And then stack it. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I can do that for this one too. Yeah, I think that, that does help sometimes because I think if you say, since you know, it's it's, it's natural to talk to your AI. First, per personally, I feel I find it natural to talk to my AI like it's an AI version of me, like it's it's me. So I say my. I stack everything in first person. Okay, so, so stack in first person. Yeah, because it's me and it's not someone else. Because if someone else asked, it would say your wife likes purple and 
your wife doesn't like purple. It's my wife that likes purple, right? Exactly. That's a great, that's a great point. If that's the memory block saved, all the AI knows is your, and then they'll think it might be that other person or they won't know it's your wife. But if someone says, what is your wife's favorite color? It'll say my. So that's another great tip that can help. Okay. So now I can say, um, what does my wife like to do for fun? My wife likes to, look, it's saying my wife likes to hike for fun. That's awesome. Yeah, and if you, you can even, let's try to ask, what does your wife do for fun? This is a little test, or I'll ask that. Go to our DM. All right, let's go to the DM, all right. My wife likes to hunt for fun. Yeah, so the, I think the, the, AI is, the AI understands, I think, the um, if I'm asking, it's looking for, you know, what you think. So it actually makes sense in the DM context and external context or lounge context to stack in first person. So that's, an, that's another great tip that can help. And then if you're stacking about your daughter, you can say my daughter. If you're stacking about a friend, you can say my friend, Tom. Um, it's great to like nail down who it is. My is me, you know, it, it definitely can help to set your AI up for success. I usually, that's why I try to avoid stacking autobiographies and things like that. If I'm stacking external knowledge, um, that's not mine. I usually try to include their name. Uh, so the AI knows it's not. I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't want Einstein's book saying, you know, I, I discovered E equals MC squared and that's not me, that's him. So Einstein discovered that. So I understand that. Yeah, that that makes sense because you don't want other people, you don't want your AI to think it's other people unless you are going for that, I guess. I guess you could make it sound like other people if you want to. Exactly. I think you can keep continuing to train with those different templates given what you want your AI to learn. And next video, we're going to go over how to get data in in more efficient and fast ways using URLs, Google documents, and more. And we're going to talk about some tips and tricks to help with getting your data in to make sure that you get, you structure it the best it can given your use case and purpose with your AI. Okay, it sounds like a little more advanced than what we've been working on so far, so. Yeah, the next is advanced training. We have the framework and it's time to, you know, build off of that. I think it's, uh, it'll be helpful. Awesome, I'm excited to get going on that. I've enjoyed it.